Praise God. Isn't it good to be in God's house? Be loud today. Have fun. Let's have a good time. There was a, a Catholic, a Baptist, and a Pentecostal all showed up in heaven at the same time. And St. Peter said, whoa, I, I don't have any space for you guys right now. It's going to be a couple of hours. And then he, and then he thought, he thought, well, let me, let me see if I can find you a spot. So he calls Satan up. He's like, Satan, can you take these guys for like three hours while I try and get their rooms ready? Satan's like, yes, I'll take them. So he takes them, and then about an hour after he takes them, he calls St. Peter up, and he says to St. Peter, you got to come get these guys. Peter says, why? He said, because the Catholic keeps forgiving everybody, the Baptist keeps saving everybody, and the Pentecostals now raised enough money for air conditioning. <laughs> Father God, open up our hearts to receive your word today. Let your word be manna. Let it be bread of life to us and strengthen us and grow us up. Lord, your word is also seed planted deep in the good soil of our hearts and produces life in us. Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Teach us what we need to know. Be strong where I am weak. Father God, give me the words to say today and, and grow us up in the, in the ways of you in, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. Well, today I want to tell you that, look at you, you're beautiful. That's not what I want to tell you, though. You're beautiful people, though. You really are. That you have eagle vision. An eagle can see better than all the other animals in the entire animal kingdom. They can see eight times better than a human can. An eagle can spot a rabbit from two miles away. If you had eagle vision, you could stand on a 10-story building and look down and see an ant crawling on the sidewalk. They have sharp vision. This is symbolic not of your carnal eyes. Your eagle vision is symbolic of your spiritual eyes. Your ability to see into things that are of the spirit. There are things happening that we see with our carnal eyes, our fleshly eyes, they'll lie to us. We see things and we think that that's what's happening. You see a big storm brewing, but are we missing things? Are we, what if we could see the spiritual things that actually were happening in the background, behind the scenes, what God is up to? What if we had spiritual insight to see what's coming? The Holy Spirit promises us visions and dreams and to tell us of things that are yet to come. This is a promise for you and I that we can receive by faith, that we would have these. The Bible is clear that we're like eagles. There's a lot of symbolism, metaphors that we mount up with wings as eagles. And also in Ezekiel in chapter 1, is the prophecy of the Messiah coming, and one of his faces was the face of an eagle. And he's in you. You have this spiritual ability to see keenly better than you can with your, with your fleshly eyes. We have to learn how to gain this ability and receive it by faith. Somebody say amen. I was, uh, when, when Kelly and I first moved into our house that we live in now, we live kind of out in the sticks, um, it gets really dark, uh, and we went up this, like, kind of a sunset walk through our neighborhood. And the sun went down, of course, and we couldn't see because it was so black. There was no, hardly any lights in our neighborhood. And there were some neighbors there that had a flashlight, and they came over and said, Listen, you can't really do this without a flashlight. There was a lady last year that stepped on a rattlesnake at night. She couldn't see it. And they explained to us that the rattlesnakes like to climb out onto the pavement at night because it's cooling outside, but the pavement is still warm. So like to lay on that. Well, sure enough, a couple, like just a little ways up from us, there was a commotion among some other neighbors out walking. We, we kind of went up there and they were showing us with their flashlight. There was a black rattlesnake slithering across the, the road right then. If, if, we, if we hadn't seen it, we could have stepped on that thing. And that's what happens in our life a lot is that we're walking through this dark world without the ability to see the things that God wants to show us we could step right on the snake. Come on, somebody. We could step right into the trap. We could step right into the potholes of life. We could find ourselves making mistakes that we didn't mean to make. But we have the ability to see spiritual things. We have this insight that is readily available to us to see, not with our carnal eyes, but with our spiritual eyes, this eagle vision. What if we could see things no one else could see? There's a story in uh, 2 Kings chapter 6 where the Syrian king kept attacking Israel, and he would set all these traps around Israel. But Elisha, the prophet, would hear what the king was up to, the Syrian king was up to, in his secret chambers. 
when he'd have his secret meetings with his generals, Elisha the prophet knew what he was saying. And so he would alert the Israel king, hey, this is where they are right now. Don't go over here. Watch out. The Syrian king is going to attack you here. Time and again it happened. And, you know, why? Because Elisha had spiritual sight. He could see things that other people couldn't see. It was a powerful gift that he was using. And then the Syrian king finds out that it's Elisha that's alerting him, the king, the, the king of Israel. So he, he sends his entire army to attack Elisha, just one guy, you know. So Elisha wakes up one morning, at, and he's in the city of Dothan, and his servant's with him. His servant's like, there's an entire Syrian army outside to arrest us. What are we going to do? He's afraid. Of course he's afraid. Sometimes we see the enemy coming at us, and we, and we, we look with our fleshly eyes at the storm that's coming, and we think, what am I going to do? Pastor, I have no hope. It looks impossible. How am I going to face this? Layoffs are coming, or the bad doctor's report, or whatever it is, the, the drama in my family, the battle that's, that the enemy's attacking me with. There's no hope, Pastor. What do I do? And so Elisha says to the Lord, he prays this prayer. It says, Elisha prayed, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Now, what eyes is he talking about here? His eyes are already open. He's not a blind man. He's talking about his spiritual eyes that he might see. There's something happening that he's not seeing. And then it goes on to say, then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So what does he see? He sees the Lord's army is bigger than the Syrian army. Up to that moment, he's afraid. He's stressed out. He's wondering, what are we going to do? We've got to run. He's about to panic, right? Got to go hide. But then he sees what, what actually God's doing behind the scenes, and now all stress and fear leave. I wonder how many times we're stressed out not knowing what, what God already knows. He's already released the army. You didn't see the big army that's out there that's all around the army that's trying to attack you. And so Elisha's saying this, there's more with us than are against us. And I want to say the same thing to you. When you face a battle, there are more with you than against you, whether you see it or not. God is moving behind the scenes. God has an answer for you. But I like how um, Elisha could see things other people couldn't see. And then he prays this prayer. And I wonder if I could pray this prayer over you this morning. Let me, let me pray this same prayer. It seemed like it was that simple for Elisha. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, over these people, that you would open their eyes that they might see in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord some praise right now. Receive your sight. I just pray that his eyes would be open, that you might see the, the things that God sees. You, Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father doing. He could see things that other people couldn't see. You have this same ability in you to see things other people can't see. To see the things that are coming at you. To see the things that are the opportunities that might be coming your way. To see these things. I pray that your eyes would be open, but I, I want you to know something. I see flourishing people in this room. I see when, you, when people come to me, like last night a, a girl came to me and, and Pastor Kelly, the sweetest thing. But she's really struggling because she keeps falling back into her old addictions and her old ways. And she just feels terrible. And she's standing there like, Pastor, how do I do this? I keep falling back into my old friendships, my old addictions. They keep running from God. I don't know. I'm, I'm so ashamed. I'm so broken. And, and the thing that she was seeing is not what I was seeing at all. Pastor Kelly and I saw this whole person in front of us. We saw this girl that was in love with the Lord. She was headed the right direction. We saw a person that was not to be ashamed, but to be celebrated. Because she, here she is in God's house, turning her life to God. This is an amazing, we were seeing different things. And so I had to explain to her and get her in the right vision and train, you know, thought mode to see herself the way God sees her. And it's the same thing for us. We've got to learn how to see ourselves the way God sees us. When I look at you, I see a healed people. I pray for you. Pastor Kelly and I pray for you all the time. When I look at you guys, I see a prospering people. I see a victorious people. When I look at you, I see a called and anointed people. I see people that can heal the sick. When I look at you, I see families full of legacy. I see your entire family saved. When you come to me and say, I need prayer for this, I already see it. 
I already see victory for you. You say, I got a bad doctor's report. I say, I already see your healing, because I do. I see it. I know that you're not going out. Come on, somebody. I know that the Lord's got you. There are more with us than against us. <laughs> Thank you. The eagle can see in 340 degrees. Now, that's almost all the way around. Just you know, peripheral vision. Very few blind spots, right? 20 degrees of blind spots. It's like they have eyes in the back of their head. My mom, I think, had eyes in the back of her head when I was growing up. All moms do, All moms do don't they? I remember, like, me and my brother be fighting in the backseat of the car, and it was a, we, we drove a 1972 Buick. It was a boat of a car. It's a massive car, and we're three very little people with my mom in the front seat. My mom's four foot ten. Now, with heels on, she's six feet, but... She has to, you know, get on a little ladder to slide into those heels. My dad built her a little step ladder so she could get into her shoes, you know. He put scriptures on it. You can buy one in the foyer if you want for yourself. But she could barely reach the pedals of this car. And when she drives, she'd be like this. You know, the steering wheel's up here. And she couldn't see the rearview mirror. She couldn't see the side mirrors. And so it's already pretty dangerous. But then she would... She would tie scriptures around her neck and a little notebook. She'd have a little notebook, right? Because the Bible says to, to bind them around your neck, the word of God. So she had a, a notebook of scriptures right here. And she would hold them up while driving and, and quote, no, it was so scary. It means my brother was we're frightened. That's where, that's where we learned how to pray in tongues. <laughs> you had to just to survive the trip. But we'd be fighting and my mom would say, okay, nobody touch anybody. Just like parents did back then. And, uh, but then I would, you'd still, you know, I'd slide my hand over because I'm going to get them one more time. But I'd be way down low. There's no way she could see this. I'm, I'm behind the seat, you know. And I'm pretty far from her. I have to remember, I'm like six feet from her, right? Because the car's so big and I'm, I'm reaching over to get my brother. And then all of a sudden, just right, right, right as I'm touching my brother, rap right on the top of the head. Dude, my mom would reach back, just pop me. That's parenting, by the way. Come on, somebody. That is not abuse. That's the parent. I, I deserved it. Right on the top of my head. I'd be like, ow. But I think back on it now, I'm like, how did she reach back there? That's impossible. She had these little T-Rex. There's no way she could have. <laughs> There's no way. It was supernatural. She has like a third arm that would come out of her back or something and hit me. I don't know how she She couldn't see me. But my parents raised me and my brother with supernatural insight. They could see things coming. Many times in my teenage years, I was headed towards a train wreck and I was hiding it. There's no way they could have known. But then they would know. They'd pull me aside. Son, we know that you're dating the wrong girl. Pff, go. She's, you're broken up now. They parented me. They disciplined me. But they saw things there's no way they could see. They'd, they'd search my brother's room and find the contraband that he just got into, you know. And keep him out of the ditch. You got to do room check. You got teenagers. You need supernatural help when you got teenagers. Somebody say amen. You need supernatural insight. And they had this, and, and so they saved us. So many times they saved us. And you say, well, I don't know about all this Holy Spirit stuff, Pastor. I've heard teachings, you know. The Holy Spirit stuff can be fruity and flaky, and I'm not sure. You may have heard some wrong teachings about the Holy Spirit. Listen, when you got born again, when you received Christ, you got the Holy Spirit. Whether you believe in it or not, you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And that Holy Spirit wants to give you supernatural insight. He wants to take the word of God and teach you and show you things that are yet to come and give you visions and dreams. You don't have to be weird to have the Holy Spirit. I'm not weird. Jesus wasn't, I'm a little bit weird, okay. But Jesus wasn't weird. He never did weird things and rolled around and did funky things with the Holy Spirit. You never see Paul doing anything weird or Peter doing anything weird. They used the Holy Spirit for supernatural insight to win in life. And you already say things like, oh, my gut feels this or... I have this intuition or I have this sense. That's the Holy Spirit trying to talk to you. And you can enhance this ability to see the spiritual things in your life. And I'm going to teach you how today. Amen? So let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. That way, when you're, when you're running a business, you can, you can make decisions nobody else can see. Because you have supernatural insight. You know what you're doing. People be like, how did you do that? How did you know that was coming? Because you're going to see things no one else sees. 
You get those red alerts in your life. You're like, that's the wrong partner. Don't partner with that person. That's the Holy Spirit telling you, avoid that person. Or your kids are hanging around with the wrong friends. The Holy Spirit will warn you. Red alert. It comes off on the inside of you. You know what's going on. Why? Because you have supernatural insight. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. Just go there with me now. That the, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. A spirit of wisdom and of revelation. What is wisdom? Wisdom is knowing what to do. I pray that you would know what to do, that you'll have wisdom as you move through this life. Imagine if you always knew what to do, how different life would be. If, you, if the problem came along and the fork came in the road, you're not sure which way to go, but you had wisdom, you would know which way to go. And then, the, and then revelation. Revelation is when the word of God comes cracked open, bare naked, all the way to, you can see what God meant when he wrote that. And it becomes alive on the inside. Revelation is alive. It's rhema. It becomes life in you. It's, it's when that word of God goes, and you go, ooh, I got that one. It's when you really get it that you would have revelation. Revelation is not just knowing what to do. It's knowing why you do it. It's having the understanding underneath why that wisdom works. I pray that you would know what to do and why to do it so that you will know. So let me keep reading. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. You have eyes in your heart. These are not your carnal eyes, the ones that we spend most of the time looking through to find out what to do. This is a different kind of eye, and this is the kind of eye that Jesus lived by, the kind of eye that we have access to, that we might have spiritual insight to what's actually happening in the background, what God's actually up to, so that we might join his team and get in his will and, 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 and not be stressed out by the army that's attacking because we know that there's more with us than against us. He says this, I pray that your eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Now that word enlightened means to be flooded with light because light helps me see, right? So you have eyes in your heart, you already have them, but that they might be enlightened, might be enhanced, that you might see even more clearly so that you will know what. He's going to give you three what's now that you will know. What is the hope of his calling? That's purpose. You're going to know what you're here to do. The next one is that you will know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That's the provision for you, the inheritance that God has for you. It's your, it's your provision. Say, it's my provision. And that you will know what, what number three, is the boundless greatness of his power towards us who believe. This exceedingly great power that raised Christ from the dead is in you. So what is he saying? That's your power. You're going to know what is your purpose what is your provision, how you're going to get there, and what is your power, how you're going to keep going when you get tired? Come on, somebody. Your purpose, your provision, your power. People say, Pastor, I don't know what I'm here to do. So you look with your carnal eyes at your giftings and abilities and try and figure out what you're here. Look at my desires. You, you go to Google and find out, how do I find my purpose? Google's going to lie to you. You're going to use your carnal eyes to find your purpose, and you're going to be distracted and moving the wrong direction. If you want to find your purpose, you have to use your spiritual eyes. So he prays that your eyes of your heart would be enlightened so that you would know what your purpose is. You're going to know. Why? Because you have spiritual insight. And then from your purpose comes provision and power. The eyes of your heart want what? They want more light. To see better, they need more light. So you can make your your eagle vision more keen, more acute, more visible, easier to see things. That's what you want to do. And how do you do that? You have to add light. What is the light? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God is that light that you seek. The word of God can enlighten the eyes of your heart so that you can see better. Think about the how, well, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3 real quick. Think about these words. By faith, we understand that the worlds were, because we walk by faith and not by, we walk by faith and not by, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. What framed the worlds? The word of God. Words framed the world. God wants to reframe your world with words so that the things which were seen were not made of things which are visible. The things that, you see are sourced in things that are unseen. The source of what you see with your carnal eyes is actually 
unseen things, but the unseen things came about through words. It's the verbal word of God. It's, it's God's word that created all things. We know that let there be light, boom, there's light. All the, the universe explodes into existence at the word of God. Is that right? Now think about it. Words have this power to repaint your vision. If you read a fictional book or a story, or even when I'm telling the story of Elisha, you're picturing things. You're not seeing words, you're seeing images, right? You, 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 you read a book and you, can, you put down the book, you're like, you don't remember reading the words of the text. Within the first sentence, you're, you're playing this movie out in your mind. It's amazing what the mind can do. It plays out an entire movie. You don't even remember reading the pages of the book. You just remember the movie that you saw. How many know what I'm talking about? And that movie can change how you feel based on what you're reading. You can, you can actually increase your heart rate. Physiological changes can happen in you because of the words that you're reading. You watch a scary movie, it can change your heart rate. It can change your physical, you can break a sweat. Why? It's not happening to you because these images have power. When you read words, they, the images that happen in your mind, they have power. And so God gives you his word to repaint the images in your spiritual eyes of what your life's supposed to look like. Because why? Because the doctor's report comes to you and says, you're, you're dying of an incurable disease. This is the doctor's report. And so then what do you do? You start to fill your eyes and your ears with the wrong words. You go to Google and Google's telling you you're going to die for sure. <laughs> Google's never helpful. You could have a headache and you Google it. Google's like, hey, you're, you're going to die. And so you fill your mind and your, your ears and your eyes with the wrong kind of light, the wrong kind of words, and it begins to dim your spiritual vision. But then here comes God's word, and you read a story about Jesus healing some blind guy. And this story creates this movie in your mind as you're reading it. You see this blind guy, he, he's been, you know, blind, it's incurable. And, and, and he doesn't seem like he's anybody special. He's just some dude. It doesn't seem like he's living his life all holy and pious and deserving of a healing. He just gets one for free. Like Jesus just gives him his healing. And you're like, that was easy. And then you see this guy get healed and he can see. And this repaints, this movie in your mind is repainting your vision. It's giving you spiritual insight to what God's trying to do in your life. And you got to see that vision. You need to change how your fear starts to leave because why because you're starting to see what god's up to in your life if he did it for the blind man in the bible he can do it for me and then you read another word of god a promise of god that says he is the god who heals all your diseases and now it's not just about the blind guy now it's about me and he's repainting my vision so i can see what he's trying to do because there's more with us than against us thank you lord jesus that's the power of the word of God to repaint your vision, to see a different future, to reframe your worlds. And it's in that is that stress leaves and fear leaves and we get back into faith. This is what God's up to in our life. Our eyes want more light. God promise, God's promises paint a new picture for our future. You know, well, here's what your future looks like blessed. When God says you're blessed in the city and blessed in the country, that should be an image to you, right? If I say pink elephant, what do you see? Do you see the word pink and then the word elephant? No, you saw a pink elephant. It was weird. I don't know why I even said that. <laughs> but it paints an image for you. God wants to paint an image for you of what the blessed in the city and blessed in the country looks like. But you have to take the time to let that word become an image in your mind. What is my life going to look like when the blessing of God hits me in a real way? What is my life going to look like? That's the vision God's trying to give you for your future. He's going to frame your world with words that are light. And that light is going to open up the eyes of your heart. And it's going to make it easier to see what God's up to in your life and to believe and to step into those things. But all too often, we let the wrong things in. The wrong kind of light. And because why? Because we, we were born with these eyes. It's all we've ever seen. We were born with these ears. It's all we've ever listened to is what the world gives us. Eagles are hunters. They only eat life. In other words, they, their food is fresh. They fly, swoop down, they grab a rabbit, boom, they kill it, they eat it. Buzzards eat dead things. Condors eat dead things. Vultures eat dead things. You're not a buzzard. You're not a condor. You're not a vulture. You don't eat dead things. Things that are already dead, you just roadkill. But I was reading this story about a, an eagle that was eating roadkill. Maybe got lazy. I don't know what happened. He's not supposed to eat roadkill. Gets hit by a car, breaks his wing. Now he's, you know, 
being in, in this kind of rehabilitation center, trying to get his wing fixed so he could fly again. Why did he get by a car? He can see so good. Too. How do he's distracted by roadkill? He's eating death. And he's not supposed to. This is not how he's built. And he gets hit by a car. This is what happens to believers all the time. Is we're busy eating the wrong thing, wondering why we got hit by the car. Get out of the street. You're not, you're not built for death. You're built for life. But all too often we're busy eating things that bring us death, negative things, things that bring us down, you know. And, and what you eat has the ability to impact your vision. Let me explain. Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. It impacted how they saw. We saw that we were naked. The Bible says that it opened their eyes, but the wrong kind of eyes got opened. It impacted their spiritual eyes got closed while their physical eyes got opened and it made a mess of things. Because eating the wrong thing can, make, can change how you see. So we've got to surround ourselves with the right kind of stuff and, and, and not just us, but our children. Being careful what they're watching on TV. What are they, wa what are they listening to? Do a phone check. And my mom did a room check on my brother and found all kinds of contraband. But nowadays, it's not a room check. You got to do phone checks. Give me your phone. Let me see what you've been up to. And, and don't say it's a violation of their privacy. No, it's called parenting. <laughs> You're still the boss. You need to know what's going on on their phone. <laughs> Amen? Because we want to be aware of what's happening in their eyes and ears. I was at a, a, a restaurant. I know I'm supposed to be done, but give me a few more minutes. I was at a restaurant, and um, they were, I was trapped there as they played country music. <laughs> was, I couldn't get out. I had to wait for my food, and... The guy's singing about how his dog died. He's like, my dog is dead. And then his wife walked out the door. And like, he's, it was such a downer. I was like, by the time the, it was halfway through the song, I was like, kind of, my mood had changed. I was feeling bad for the guy, you know. It, it could bring you down. The, the, the wrong thing. The, the guy said to me the other day, if you play a country music backwards, it's a better way. Because he gets his truck back, his dog back, and his wife back. <laughs> they all come back to him. So maybe just play it backwards. I don't know. But um, the wrong kind of voices. Samson got around the wrong kind of people. I have a couple minutes left. I'm going to take them. He got around the wrong kind of people, and it messed with his whole life. You know, he hung out with prostitutes, and then he gets around this Delilah lady. And the Bible says that when the Philistines finally took him, they gouged out his eyes. It's a metaphor for us. When we get around the wrong voices, it can mess with our spiritual vision, our ability to see what God's trying to show us. Why? Because people can be bringing, bringing us down. They negative they're talking bad about the boss they're judgmental judgmental people in particular very dangerous to get around people that are gossiping and slandering our job is just to turn away we don't need to judge the judgmental people but we need to walk away from those things keep your eyes and your ears away from the things like that you know judgmental people that i call them pharisees are very dangerous in your life because they can really dim your vision let me explain to you what i mean Judgmental, judgmental people and Pharisee kind of thinking is to use the scripture to hurt people. They know the Bible. That's the dangerous part. The dangerous part is they might know the Bible better than you. Pharisees knew the Bible better than most everyone else, but they used the Bible to hurt people. That's why Jesus was so upset with them. Using the Bible to cut on people. They say, sinner! How dare they, that the way they live their life. They're not even saved, I'll bet. They're not even saved. They're not even going to heaven because of the way they live their life. The Bible says judge and you'll be judged. Don't be around those kinds of voices. It'll dim your spiritual insight. Let me, sh let me read it to you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm going to read the whole passage. Just stay with me. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil, talking about a veil over their heart, remains when the old covenant is read. That's the law, the rules, the the. That if you sin, you're cursed, the old covenant. If you sin, you're cursed. It has not been removed because the only way, only in Christ is it taken away. Now listen to this. Even to this day when Moses is read, he's talking about the old covenant, that, that old agreement that if you sin, you're cursed. You're, you know, a veil covers their heart whenever Moses is read. You get around people that are talking like this, it covers your heart with a veil. You can't see what God's trying to show you anymore. Run away from those crowds. Stay away from judgmental, pharisaical people that are using the word of God to hurt people because you don't want that in your heart. You don't want that veil over your heart. You got to keep those eyes wide open. No, no, no. Jesus came to forgive the sinner, not condemn the sinner. Somebody say amen. Be like Jesus, not condemning, but forgiving. 
me read this last scripture to you and then we'll close. This is my challenge to you. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 18. Like my mom, have the word of God all around you. Just get that light going. Listen to what it says. Therefore, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be frontlets between your eyes. He's saying, take the word of God and put it everywhere. Put it between your eyes even. This frontlets is this is Hebrew word, to, totopoth, which meant a little leather box that had scriptures in it. And he's saying, take that little, little leather box that has scriptures in it and put it between your eyes. I want you just looking at the scripture all the time. And then he keeps going. He says, you shall teach them to your children. This spiritual insight is about your family. It's about your, it's about your children. It's about your legacy. It's about your, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad. That's what this is about. This is not about spiritual insight to have the hot seat at some prayer meeting at the church, which is also awesome. But it's about using it in everyday life that you might have spiritual insight into your marriage. Spirit, you, somebody didn't say amen. We need the Holy Spirit to understand our wives, fellows. Come on. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so it goes on to say, and you shall write them on your doorpost of your house and on your gates. When you walk in, when you're going out, well, let me back up for a second. When you lie down and when you rise up, the word of God should be all around you. So, so many people, they go to bed after watching some junk on TV and they wonder why they can't sleep well. You just let all this garbage in your brain. Or you wake up in the morning, the first thing you turn to is things you shouldn't look at or some kind of news or something, negativity. And then you wonder why your day's a mess and why your mood's a mess. No, don't let the wrong things in. Stop eating death. Eat life. Get the word of God right before you go to bed. Pray and let the word of God in your heart right in the morning as you wake up. Maybe do a Bible study. I don't know. Do a daily Bible study. There might be some pastor somewhere who actually spends time to give you a scripture and pray every day. Every single day. What kind of pastor would do that? He's crazy. There's lots of daily Bible studies. You can listen to any of them. You don't have to listen to mine, but mine is better. <laughs> and it goes on to say, when you lie down and when you rise up, have the word of God around you, and you shall write them on your doorposts in the house of your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them like the days of heaven above earth, that your days here on earth would be like days of heaven. How? By having the word of God all around you. Let it lighten up your, the eyes of your heart. Let it brighten up your day. Don't get into the wrong things. My challenge is, is turn away from the wrong voices, the wrong noises, the wrong things to look at, and turn into what God wants you to look at, his word. Surround yourself with it. It'll change your life. It'll open up the eyes of your heart. And I believe that you will find your purpose, your provision, and the power that God has for you in your life. You're going to have wisdom and revelation. You'll know what to do. You'll know why to do it. God is going to give you the land that he swore your forefathers and give you days on earth like they are in heaven. Somebody give the Lord some praise right now. Let me ask you a question. If you're to face eternity today, do you know what eternity looks like for you? And would you have peace with Father God? Here's the good news. God has already offered the free gift of eternal life to anyone who will believe. And you might say, believe what? Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for sin and rose from the dead. Make him the Lord of your life today. And you can know before you walk out those doors where you will spend eternity, it'll be in the kingdom of heaven with Father God. Everyone repeating this prayer after me, mean it in your heart and you can be saved. Dear Father God, forgive me of all my sin. And Jesus, I believe in you. You're the Son of God who died for sin and rose from the dead. Be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>